That's why we have business managers. You yes, know? that's yeah. why they're there. But you like the business aspect. You like well, I enjoy, knowing what's going on. Yeah, we have business meetings. About every two weeks we have, you know, business meetings. And he tells us what's going on, and we get involved in that, you know. Probably you like the input. design aspect, too? You I like, like the, the design, business? yeah. I like the design part best. I mean, the business is... What's long range for, uh, for Koala Blue Shops? I well, mean, we just reasonable, opened it. how many? Reasonable? Oh, heavens. Well, he's talking in the next five years about 200. Um, we, well, we'll be 40 probably by the end of this year. We just opened in Japan. We're opening in Hong Kong this year. We're opening in Europe next year. Um, Australia, finally, at the <laughs> end of this year. And uh, we're in Hawaii and Canada already and all around America. So, um, and we're doing licensing programs. You're going to be one of those we'll see you in every shopping center? <laughs> oh, God, I hope so. <laughs> you know what happens. We go to shopping center. There's the Radio Shack. Right, right. right. There's the Walden. Uh -huh. There's the Koala Blue, right? It's got to come It'd to be that. nice. Well, you could do worse. That's Our guest right. is Olivia Newton-John. We'll talk about her extraordinary career as well. The Koala Blue shops are popping up everywhere. The most recent one here in the Washington, D.C. suburbs. Later, Susan Anton. This is Larry King Live. Don't go away. Your first hit was a was a country song. Yes, if not for you, um, it was a Bob Dylan song. Was that considered country? Yeah, well, kind I, of. Because I remember yeah, it, I folk. think of it. I love that tune. Yeah. Folkish country. Yeah, folk. I actually took it off the George Harrison album, but it was the Bob Dylan song that George Harrison had co covered. And it started to get played where in England? It started in England. I had a hit in England, and then it kind of got airplay in America. And I came over here and did the Dean Martin show and a few things. And then nothing really happened for me until again until about seventy three, seventy four, and I had um, if. If you love me, let me know. And that was kind of the beginning of my country career. And then I crossed over into pop. By with what song? I think it was um, Honestly Love You, or Have You Never Been Mellow. I'm not sure of the chrono chronology. Yeah, but both <laughs> were hits. Yes. And they were, they were not rock, they were kind of off track hits in that they were, another kind of music was going on and you were selling your kind of music, wasn't it? Yeah, well, country was kind of very popular at that time. And John Denver and myself were kind of at the beginning of that crossover era. In mm -hmm. fact, I was very unpopular with the country people at that time because they... you had left them? Well, no, I, I, I was living in England. I was Australian, being produced by an Australian and an Englishman and, and having hits that invaded their territory. So they weren't too thrilled. But um, I was accepted after all, so it was all right. And the first movie was what? first movie was um, Greece. Ah, Greece. Lucky me. <laughs> How did that come about? Well, Alan Carr met me at a um, dinner party. Helen Reddy and her husband at the time, Jeff Wald, actually they were kind of instrumental in my moving to America because they, they said, if you want to have, have success, you have to be here. So I, I moved over and they were very good to me anyway. Having dinner, Alan met me. I was fooling around making silly faces. He remembered me and when he was casting the movie, um, said he thought I'd be right for it. So I did a, uh, a screen test with John Travolta because I wanted to see how I was. I was very nervous about doing the film. You had never acted? I had done a little bit, yes, and I'd done a film in England that was really bad, and I didn't want to do another bad one. <laughs> so. Well, I didn't, wasn't there the question of, uh, this is a, they'd had an invent that you come from somewhere else, right? Yeah. Because on Broadway, it was an American girl, exactly. wasn't it? Exactly. Well, they, first of all, they asked me would I change my accent, and I said, no, I'm an Australian, <laughs> I'd really like to stay that way, because I didn't think I could pull it off very well to have a, um, an American accent, so they wrote it in, which was great. The screen test went well. One Very well, yeah. yeah. It was fun. Did you expect that film to do as well as it did? No, I'm not that well. I mean, it was a phenomenon. It was incredible. And I remember going to the screening of it the first time I saw it and thought it was fun and I thought the music would do well, but I had no idea it would ever be that big. And it still is. I meet little kids now, seven and eight, who say, oh, I watched Grease, you know, 15 times. And their mother's why, going, Why do you Please. think, in retrospect now, I think it just captured a, an innocence uh, and an era that appealed to older people who had been there and young people who it kind of looked really fun, the clothes and the music, and it just had a real, it had a great energy to it too, I think. Yeah, it did, from, yeah. go, from the word mm -hmm. go. And of course, the uh, chemistry between you and him. Yes. You have to admit, yeah, great yeah. chemistry, great good. supporting cast too. Yeah, wonderful. We had fantastic people in that film. Now, one could well ask, what happened to both of you. Uh -huh. uh, you made another film together. I did. Two of a kind, did, right? Yes. That didn't do as didn't well. Didn't do well at all, no. What happened to John's career, do you think? I don't know. I think he just took some time off. I think he, you know, he'd been Saturday Night Fever and then Greece, and it was, you know, so big. 
it's very hard to follow something like that. You know, you, maybe in your life you have one incredible film like that. I mean, John was lucky he had two. Back um, to back. Almost. Back to back, no. yeah. So for him, I think he took a breather. For me, I continued with my singing career and kind of um, didn't find anything else. But we were desperate to work together and we were looking for years and years, found two of a kind. And the script was really quite good. It just didn't, wasn't executed right or, you know, who knows what happens in films. It just was unfortunate. But we still like working together. It was yeah. fun. Well, those, those, you can't, if you could predict the business, right? Yeah. yeah. But John's in a film now that I saw, just saw, that I oh, think is me. really charming. It's called Daddy's Home with Kirstie Alley. And, I think um, he's making a whole batch of movies again, so I think he'll be back in the public eye. And he's really sweet in this film. I love. Did it. you like working with him? Oh, he's great. He's a good friend. Has he handled this well, this up and down part? Yes, he has. He really has. Yeah. Whereas it hasn't uh, checked him any or put him into any kind of despondency because Travol he was number one box office, wasn't mm -hmm. he? I think so. Yeah. No, I think he's you know he's a sensible, intelligent person, and he realizes that you know careers go like that, and. Um, he has his aeroplanes, and he's been having a fine old time. I think now he's just getting back into really concentrating on a batch of films. Also, probably the most difficult thing artists like yourself deal with is selectivity, right? Yes. What do you take? What do you turn down? Mm -hmm. Regret anything you've turned down? Um, no. No, you haven't no. made one of those mistakes. No, I don't think so. And well, unlike John... Maybe I don't know of. <laughs> unlike John, you're a singer. Yes. So you can always sing. You don't need a film career. No. But you'd like a film career. Um, if, you know, if the right thing came up, it's not, it's not the most important thing to me. I, I'd love to make a good film, you know, now that I've kind of made a couple of duds in between. I mean, I had another film called Xanadu, which was musically successful, wasn't that great a uh, box office success, but I'd like to make a, a film of some kind, maybe about, you know, the issues that are going on in the world now, something grown up, but... That, it what's going to hurt you there is the way you look, right? You just look, in fact, you look down-home American. Oh, yeah? <laughs> don't you think? You don't look, I don't know what an Australian looks like, but you look like girl next door, pretty American. Oh, that's okay. Girl next door in Australia can look the same. <laughs> our guest is Olivia Newton-John, the Koala Blue Shops. They're going to be everywhere. We'll be back with our remaining moments after this. called Koala Blue. She's Olivia Newton-John, who this past weekend made a musical video with uh, Michael Jackson. Tell me about that. Oh, it was just fun. Michael's doing another video, um, the Liberian Girl, off his album. And so he invited probably every celebrity in town to do a little cameo on it. So when I got there, Steven Spielberg was there and Amy Irving and John Travolta and I. I should have mentioned that before, but we did a little bit together in that. And uh, I think they were kind of filming what was going on behind the scenes as much as they were filming the little bits we did to put in the video. He wasn't there, unfortunately, but we had fun anyway. So there'll be a whole bunch of you yeah, on this video. lots of people. Um, Stephen Gutenberg and Rosanna Arquette and uh, Dan Aykroyd and, oh, the list was <laughs> huge of people. Are you, are you always looking for music? I mean, are you... Well, you're happily married, right? Yes. You have a child? Beautiful little girl, yes. You, you don't need any of this do you i mean you could just live a quiet mm -hmm. married life where are you now how do how, how would well, you put you my life is much much calmer i mean I, I hardly i don't go on the road anymore i don't travel terribly much unless it's for an opening which is usually like a day or two and, and usually i take my daughter but she has a cold too so i left her at home and um my so husband there's no newton john concert no tour. no okay. and my husband's an actor so he he goes on location to do films, so we try and be with him. So really, I, my family comes first. My husband, my daughter comes first. My Koala Blue has kind of taken precedence over my singing career because I had an album out last year, but it kind of didn't do terribly well. So therefore, I made a special and I did the promotions and stuff. But as it didn't take off, I didn't really have to do any of the follow-up stuff to it. So really, Koala Blue has been the main focus. But I'm going to do an album this year also. Uh, and you're looking in, in what kind of material is sent to you? I mean, you're 40 now, right? Uh -huh. Do they send you rock songs? Yeah, I get all country. kinds of what things. What do you get? I get all kinds of things. But it's getting harder and harder to get material because most people record their own stuff, so they kind of hang on to the good ones. So on the last album I wrote, I co-wrote quite a lot of them so that I could have my input. I wanted to write about things that were concerning me. You, know, you did a TV special on Australia, didn't you? Yeah, Where you kind of took us there mm -hmm. and HBO. gave us a tour. Yeah. 
Okay, so there's no great desire. You're not, you're not in the hunting aggressive. I really wanted stage, are no. you? No. Does that hurt you? Do you think? Um. I mean, you're not viciously in. The, I don't mean that word badly. <laughs> I know. What viciously you mean. in the marketplace. Yeah, no, not at the moment. Well, I, my life is so full. I'm, I'm really happy. I kind of feel like I, I had a child late at, in life. Yeah, and, that's right. Um, you were how old when you child? Um, she's three, so I was 37, 36, 37. You know. And so, you know, they're not young very long, and I don't want to be one of those showbiz mums that dumps her with a nanny and takes off. I want to be there for her. And she's a jewel. I mean, she's incredible. And probably if I'd had children younger, I would have had a slew of them, you know. So I want to be there for her, and developing this business has been really interesting, and it's also something that is for the future, because you, show business, you know, up and down, you never really know. So singing, I love to sing. I mean, I, I miss just singing. So this yeah, next well, album, I'm going to just Since sing. that's what you do the best, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you're a singer. Mm -hmm. You're a damn good singer. Thank you. Don't you miss singing? Uh, I, yeah, sometimes I do. I sing to my little girl, and she says, Mommy, please don't sing. I mean, it's don't you say to yourself, I, I would, I'd like to do a tour, I'd like to go around, I'd like to no. hear the, the crowds again. No, I don't really miss that. For me, that wasn't... Some artists I know need that feedback and they need that, you know, the, the cheering and everything. I always, always used to feel, I've, I think I'm very, very realistic and I always used to feel that, you know, tomorrow night it'll be someone else. So I never really um, got carried away with it. You know, I, I loved it and I took it for what it was, but really? I wasn't... Really? But you were able to, that's kind of an Australian perspective, I think right? so, yeah. yeah. It's that well, well, someone else will be thing. here tomorrow and they'll be <laughs> screaming for her. That's anyway. right, yeah. So what's the big deal? How does your husband, your, is your husband a successful working actor? He's on his way. He will be, yes. So he's a, he's in that driven Yeah, he's stage. in that. Mm -hmm. So I'm left to support him, which I, which is great. How, does he handle the fact that his wife is better known at this point well? Yes, that's what has been incredible about our relationship in that when I met him, he was just, he was a dancer starting out and there was never any competition. He, he was proud of me and he was, he, um, he was fantastic. That's really why it's worked for us too, I think. It, uh, are you, do you think he's going to make it? Yeah, definitely. Has he got a good fallback if he doesn't? He can do anything. I mean, he's, he's, a, um, he's good with his hands. He's, he, can do, he can do a lot of things. I, I won't be worried about him. But I think he will make it. He has a film coming out this summer. Home is too. permanently California? Uh-huh. Okay. Giving a lot, this is happening to a lot of women now, so maybe in our remaining two and a half minutes here we mm -hmm. can talk a little about it. Giving birth in the late 30s uh -huh. used to be forget it. No one did. Right. If you didn't have children by 35, you usually didn't have children. Mm -hmm. What's it like? One, was it more difficult? Well, I have nothing, nothing to compare, compare to. to. Well, but, um, was it very painful? Well, childbirth is, it is painful, but I mean, you forget it. Otherwise, women wouldn't have children. I mean, it's, and it's worth it. I mean, the little gift you have at the end is worth any kind of pain you go through. So that wasn't so bad. Well, what was the toughest part about being 37 and a mother? Being tired. But I think you're tired whether you're 27 or 37. I think. Just that change, you know, up, up until then it was all, oh, I'll go to the movies now, or I'll, I'll do this, or I'll do that, and suddenly you can't just do what you want to do when you want it to do, and that's, that's an adjustment. But I must say, for the first three months, I didn't want to even leave the house. I just wanted to be with that little baby. That's all I wanted. Now, it might be said also that a 24-year-old mother can have an easier time chasing mm -hmm. this little thing around mm -hmm. the house yes. <laughs> than a 39-year-old mother yes. chasing a 2-year-old around. This is true. I the have, endurance factor. Yeah, I have... Um, most of my friends, we, I have a baby group, and I think the average age of the mothers in, in the group is my age, between 38 and, and 42. We're all older mothers, so we all well, kvetch, you know, carry on. It's a good idea. About, you get together. Yeah, we get together and we discuss it. And, um, you know, it is harder as you get older. I mean, you, you think much harder about having another one because that's twice the work, you know. But um, it's fantastic. I, I'm glad I waited in that I think I appreciate her more and I'm not thinking about other things and I'm, I don't have to be pursuing my career. Um, I've done it, you know. This, everything yeah. now is icing on the cake and she's the, the candle on the top. Yeah. Would you have another child? Um, if I'm lucky enough to. Oh, you want another? Uh, I'd like one, but I don't know if I'll be able to, but, you know, oh, you mean maybe. be able to maybe. physically be able yeah, to? Maybe. You know, the if age you would factor, be, yeah. you know. If the age factor is, <laughs> oh, if everything checks out, you would like another child? I'd like one. Yeah, maybe. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I wish you best in everything. Thank you. you. Great meeting. Thanks very much. Olivia Newton-John. Uh, Koala Blue Shop. They just opened another one. They're opening everywhere. We have a new album coming out sometime during 1989, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to record it in 19.
89. Our friend John Travolta is going to have a new film out, which she says is terrific. What's the title of it? It's What's called that? Daddy's Home. Daddy's Home. We're going to try to get John on this show as well. We thank you very much for joining us for the first part. Now, don't go away, because when we come back from the break, Susan Anton will be with us. This, if you're into looks and talent, this is not a bad night for Larry King Live. Susan Anton is next. Don't go away.